All right, Rachel. I'm going to cap down because we're we'll going to be focusing mostly on the feet and stepping for the first few minutes. We're going to do about eight minutes of stepping. This is a good Bagua number. And then our hip opening after that in eight more minutes to really feel how the hip rolls change our, our relationship with the ground. Okay? And we're going to begin with Leong style stepping. So everyone watch for a quick moment while I break it down briefly. So you can see my ankles. As I step through, I grab, pull the weight, big toe lifts in the back foot, pull the heel out of the ground, feet touch, step, Grab, pull, lift, pull, and feet together is where we're starting. If you've done this for a long time, start linking those pieces together. So now it becomes touch, grab, and that grab immediately creates that pull. Once the weight's over that foot, the back toe immediately lifts, then drawing from the hip, pulling up, step, grab, pull, big toe lift, pull the foot up, and touch. Okay? Let's come to our circle. And again, nice and even, hands in relaxed holding chi, foot grabs, pulls the weight, big toe raises in the back foot, pulling the feet together, step, pull, big toe lifts, pulling the foot together, and step, and continue. Good. Now, the place where it's easiest to lose that connection to your middle is in that pull. It can be really easy to pull and leave your hips behind, right? So again, there you go. See, lost my hips. But if I can maintain that pull from my umbilicus, now that shifts all my way over at once, my back alignment's maintained as I step, pull, still drawing from that belly as I draw up. So again, as you travel from foot to foot, Make sure you never lose that stomach engagement. Otherwise, you can end up in a pattern more like this. We can see I'm moving, but there's way too much movement to the hip and not enough power transfer from the ground on upward. Taking your time, filling each leg. Keep walking. Good. Rounding the chest, Elizabeth, reaching with the fingertips. Let the breath come to your belly, Derek. Good, April. Take your time as you pull the weight up to that front foot. Make sure your whole body comes with you on that pull. Very nice, Caro. Caro, as you get warmed up, um, add a little speed to your stepping. He's been doing this for a long, long time. Good structure, Galen. Okay, with the inside foot forward, the outside foot comes in, makes a V step, that kobu. From here, the weight pulls into that foot, the feet touch, stepping out to the side, pulling the feet together, and take a few nice and slow steps to again find your balance and your coordination, and continue from there.
keep going. Good, April, the arms press a little and round. Very nice. Good, Kara, playing with that stretch, filling the chest. Good. Making sure the eyes are at horizon level, Galen. Good, Kara, raise the back of the neck a little bit more so your chin comes down just a fraction, so you're raising to the top of your head. Derek, turn your eyes a little bit towards the center of the circle to help pull your body around. Good. Grabbing, pulling, big toe lifts, and drop. Make again sure that belly is engaged as you walk. Facing the center of your circle and relax. Okay, allow me to undecapitate myself real quick. All right, wait, no, still no head. Almost. Okay, I exist in frame. Slightly wide stance. Starting with the right leg, external rotation. Full circles. Out, around, and in. Adding that toe grab, belly draw, and head neck lift. Changing legs, external rotation, all the way in, around, and through. Adding in the foot grab, belly draw, and neck lift. Figure eights, making sure one hip rolls into the next.
complete each circle. Then add that foot grab and see how that changes things. And the belly draw and the neck lift. Finally, that knitting of those clavicles. Pulling leg to leg, pulling one side, pulling into the other. The kids are having fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, back to that middle and back to that first leg, internal rotation all the way in, back, and around. Once you have that circle down, add in the foot grab, belly draw, and head neck lift. Okay, from here, switching to the other leg. Big internal rotating circles. First two revolutions, find that shape. Okay, mm -hmm. when the knee for the leg feels good and the hip feels smooth, add in that foot grab, belly draw, and head neck lift. From here, rolling into those figure eights. Rounding and pulling hip to hip. Making sure that foot grab, belly draw, and head neck lift are all at play. Few more seconds. All right, relaxing in that middle. Shake it out for a moment. We're gonna get back to our circle walking in a second, but I wanna do it in the context of the yellowtail crocodile. So we're gonna do that for a second first. The basic hand position here, is this, pinchers, other three fingers touching, both hands at pinchers. As one hand goes out, palm up, the other hand's palm up on the side, reach, sorry, just palm down on the side, reach and switch, extended arm is palm up, switch and reach, one hand palm up, the other palm down. Notice how the switch happens at the same time on both arms. My thumb is right at the very top of the crest of my pelvis, okay? So it's drawing in, reaching. Notice how as I reach out, I'm reaching out the level of my own neck each time. So all the strikes are very focused at the center of the body. From here, we're gonna start playing with an external rotation of the hips. We can go really slow with this in the beginning. So you see how as my hip rolls, it pushes the arm forward, as the hip rounds, it turns the hands, 
Next hip comes through, pushes the hands forward, hips round, turns the hands. Reach, turn, reach, turn. As I relax into a figure eight with this, the arms become more smooth. And my body is kind of a lumbering rolling quality to it. He's getting external rotation, draws the body out because it moves externally. Internal rotation brings the body to a point. So we're using that external roll to create that roundness in the hips and arms. Good. If I could borrow Rachel for a second. There are three main things you can do with crocodile if she reaches towards me. There's arm break if she strikes in and I roll through. There's the elbow strike and lastly, the grab to the throat. Okay? And so, thank you. You can focus on any one of those three things so long as you're focusing on something, right? And so, let's say that I'm first working on that throat grab because in a lot of ways it's the most simple of the movements. My major emphasis is now on that reach. You can see how there's a bit more of a linear quality to my movement, right? If my focus is on the elbows, you can see how now the rotation increases in my hips because I'm reaching out with that part of my extremity, right? Very different look to the roll. If I'm focusing on the break, as I draw through, there's more of a raised chop because that's what I'm trying to translate through from the hips into the arms, right? What we're gonna work on right now is how to use this pull to carry us from point to point. So if I start in this half of my room, as I reach out, my hand and foot arc together. As I turn and pull, you see how it changes the hips. That's gonna bring that other hip through, the feet touch. As I step, hand and foot turn, pulling the body up, the feet touch. Hand and foot turn, pulling the body up, touch to turn, touch to turn. Playing with this nice and slow on a line. Touch to turn, pull. Touch, turn, pull. Play this in your own time. and continue for just a second. Good, Carol, keep that belly draw to your spine so your back can stay nice and straight. Good, Galen, as you get more comfortable, start working on eliminating the pause. There's a constant roll from side to side, there's no stop. Good care, making sure that turn is coordinated between the hand and the feet. I'm having a little a bit of difficulty figuring out what I'm supposed to do with the breath here. Mm, the breath is natural and relaxed. Okay. It's just neutral breathing for this. Um, it can be a very fast thing, a very slow thing, the movement, and the breath just kind of helps support you through. So there's no set point for inhalation or exhalation in this exercise. Okay, thanks. Yeah, of course. Good, Derek. Eyes tracking the hands, Elizabeth. Good, April. Hand and foot turn together, right? So as I come through here, my hand and foot turn to pull. Turn to pull.
Good. Everyone give it a rest for a second. Actually, Galen, now that I think about it, to answer your question a bit more specifically, um, there's a heaviness to the breath. I remember distinctly when Zhang Shurf would do this, be like, like there, there was work being done, not a rigidity of work, but like he was pulling weight to weight to weight. Like if you got in the way, every bit of him was ready to just kind of drag you to the ground to a death roll, is how it felt, right? And so it wasn't light chest breathing, it was the whole body. Like there, there, there was a power to the cadence of his breathing. Does that make sense? But it's not necessarily timed with the movements. Correct, correct. It just had that, it was, you know, belly breath, it was deep, it was substantive, and it kind of rolled with the cadence of his stepping. Okay, when you say rolled with, it, but it, you, you might breathe over like three or four of the movements. Exactly, exactly. But again, there's that constant heavy of the breath. Okay. And thinking about it, it was, it was, it's a very apparent memory of working with him on this one. Okay, I'll try yeah. to work with him. Thank you. Of course, of course. Any other questions? Okay, is the line feeling a little bit more comfortable? Anyone struggling to do this in a straight line? I am. I, I think I've done this once before, and I feel like if I did it once before, I was doing it better then. No worries, this is a tricky one. And what I'm really working with here for the stepping, so you know exactly what I'm after, is that arcing foot to pull. Arc to pull, arc to pull. And what I want you most to feel is how, as the foot comes in, it's like it's gathering energy and then sparks off the side. The foot draws in, there's compression, and that potential energy sparks to the side. So each step, has that draw to explode, draw to explode. So I come to here, there's the reach, draw. Does that make a bit more sense, April? I think so, but now I need to get it from my brain back into my body. Okay, so let's do about 30 more seconds of this in a straight line, you okay? Yeah. Awesome. So again, facing the camera, so it's easier to see. Yeah, yeah. There's that reach to pull, reach to pull. Very nice, like as you reach out, you're grabbing onto a rope, you clamp onto that rope and you pull your body up Swing out, grab, pull your body up. Just a little bit more, you're all doing great. Awesome, shake it out for just a second. So there are many, many components of Bagua circle walking. Some of them are easier to kind of you know, hear and digest than others, right? Like that gentle foot grab to big toe lift. There are mistakes can be made with that, but conceptually it's not a very difficult one to kind of get your head around, right? There's some element of pull, the big toe releases first. We can all kind of you know, get an image of that on hearing it for the first time. To me, one of the more challenging aspects of circle walking is that constant pressure between the two thighs as you take successive steps, right? Because there is no object between my knees that I'm squidging as I step through. But by the same token, if there's no dynamic tension, my stepping begins to look very pedestrian and uncoordinated, right? But if I bring in that draw and that squeeze, you see how instantly there's a focus that translates up my body that's entirely absent without that piece. And I found in teaching this, you know, many, many times that trying to add this in as one of the five things we're covering just doesn't work because it takes too much effort. And so crocodile is nifty because by its very nature, it forces that compression to turn out and that compression to turn out. And you can mirror what's happening in the shoulders and the hands 
which are much easier structures to understand with the body feel that we're trying to get in our quads and feet, right? And it's as though we have an 80s Jane Fonda thigh master, and we're squeezing that in, and the pressure is launching our leg out. Squeeze to launch, squeeze to launch. And again, even though there's nothing here, if I'm drawing my belly to my spine, if I'm grabbing with the ground, and if I'm pulling into that leg, I can feel like there's this draw between those adductor muscles, the muscles right through here that pull that leg up and that pressure brings the foot through, okay? So on a circle of your own making, I'm gonna decapitate myself again so everyone can see. For a few moments, play with that idea of drawing in and then using that to reach out. There's a squidge and an expansion. Everything draws, everything expands. Draws and expands. See how I use my arms to mimic what's happening in my legs because I want to make this as easy to feel as possible. Everything draws in, everything shoots out. Everything draws in and out. All right? Very nice, take your time, play with that pulling through the legs. And this kind of action is an important Gung Fu action. Um, I've seen several of my masters play with this in different ways. Wang Chi has his own Qi Gong for Pao Chui, which draws in and expands out. Zhang Shuian does it with that leg squeeze. They all have some way of building this connection. Again, it's not immediately recognizable, but it does play a huge role as you get into intermediate and advanced training. Good, so from here, let's now add in the movement of yellowtail crocodile on the base we've been opening up, okay? And so as I draw through, the leg draws in, and then the leg reaches out, hand and foot turn, pull. Hand and foot turn, pull. Turn, pull, turn, pull. If you're brand new to this, look straight ahead. If you want more of a challenge, let the eyes orient to the hand as it turns and draws back. And that shifting of the head neck side to side creates a really nifty spine stretch. And it's also challenging for your balance. And again, if adding in the crocodile is too much, go back to that squeeze to open squeeze to open, we were playing with before. Very nice, take your time with this. Really feel how as the hand comes through, it's clamping onto something, pulling up, let your body pull, everything compresses, and then explodes out to get that next grip. Pulls in, everything compresses, draws out. Good care, take your time, try to smooth it out now. So it's one constant roll in the belly that draws you side to side. There you go, good, no more pauses. Make sure there's a constant movement. It can be a slow movement, that's fine. You just never want a true stop. Very nice, Galen. As you get more comfortable, Galen, start watching the hand as it draws back. So you can begin to work on that spinal draw side to side, how that will affect your cadence and your stepping. Good, April. April, as you reach out, pull and let that pull draw the other hand through. See my feet are together, my hands reached, and then as the foot comes out, the hand turns. Pull, feet come together, there's the reach, and there's the turn. 
Hand comes through, feet together. Reach as the hand and foot arc out. There you go, guys. The difference? Mm -hmm. And it becomes I see a little better. Yeah. Hard to find the ideal view. Yeah. And relax for a moment. So there's quite a bit going on there. Um, any questions? Okay, so we've done the hip rolling. We've isolated the hip compression with crocodile. Now we're trying to bring that back into the context of regular stepping. All right, so watching me first. Timer back on. Okay. So before the foot came out, grab, pull, grab, pull. And you see this kind of a wobble in my legs because aside from that pull, there's nothing really stabilizing the joints, right? I want to get more stability in those joints. And so the way I'm gonna bring that in now is as I pull the feet in, there's a draw between the two legs. And just like in crocodile, the reach out. Draw, compress in between the two legs, reach out. Hands are in a nice neutral holding chi. And notice how even though I'm arcing and the body feels that of an arc, in terms of the aesthetic you're watching, this is not that different visually than walking a straight line on a circle, right? They look pretty similar, but if you notice here, my joints are all kind of wobbly. There's not a lot of stability from step to step. I bring in that little bit of arc to carry the feet and all of a sudden that one added vector gives me a lot more power and pull as I transition from step to step. You see it? The feet are still touching. And this is how I carry my basic bog walk circle walking principles into a more fluid or last stepping pattern, which better resembles the bog walk that we all hope to be doing. All right, so playing with this, again, if you get completely lost with it, remember, everything compresses as you come in, expands as you reach out. Compress, expand. Compress, expand. And it's not expand, 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 that way lies silliness. It's just enough of an arc that you feel your legs tracking more fluidly and naturally. Good. If you feel yourself get overwhelmed, you can always take a break by going back into a more simple version of stepping, right? The most basic version we have from Leongshir is step, grab, pull, feet together, step, grab, pull, feet together. Once that feels comfy again, then I'm going to start playing with that compress to open, compress to open. For those of you that have done a fair bit of stepping, as you've been working down that compressed to open, make sure that you're always on that medial aspect of your foot. You're not letting the weight roll to the side. You're focusing it all along that continuous arc of your circle. So let's take a break for a moment. So now for the big question, is circle walking an internal or external rotation of the hip? Any ideas? Trick question, both. Ding, 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 five points for Galen. Which house are you part of? Uh, 
don't know. All right, fair enough. So Galen's house, five points. <laughs> and that's absolutely correct, right? It is both internal and external rotation. As I come through here, that's pretty obviously external rotation, that part of step. But now as I pull the other leg through, it turns the internal as it draws that hip in. And that internal arc becomes the external arc. That external arc becomes the internal arc of the other foot. So you see how it's a pull one, two, pull one, two, side to side. External as the foot leaves, right? Internal as we pull the feet in and through. External as it leaves. Internal as it draws in. Internal to external, internal to external. There's the external pull, there's the internal. Does that make sense? Yeah? Awesome, awesome. And this alone is worth spending just a whole bunch of time. You know, put on your favorite CD, you know, music, I don't make CDs anymore, I'm old, um, audiobook, TV show, podcast, whatever the kids do these days. And just play with that idea of pulling the weight from foot to foot with these spirals from leg to leg. It will pay huge dividends in your bagua. For one, it'll make the bagua stepping feel less like an inconvenience and more like a thing that you can actually weaponize and have a tool in your back pocket, right? As long as the stepping feels foreign and janky, you're never gonna fall into that naturally. You're certainly not gonna use it under duress because why would you? When you can really feel that constant interchange of not just, you know, turn to turn, but hip coil one way versus hip coil the other, every small shift like that has in it the potential to produce a massive amount of power. And the better you can identify those and break down the distinction between them, the more they become tools at your disposal, okay? So let's play with that coiling in the hips a couple more times around the circle as we step. Again, just take it easy, starting off with compress to open, compress to open. Really feel that, play with that. And if that's challenging enough for tonight, that's a big thing. You know, there's, there's no reason to just push on beyond that. But for those of you who've done a bunch of stepping and really want to add in some more depth to your practice, play with that coil of hip as it draws out versus draws in. Hip draws out, hip draws in. Out, in. Out, in. Out, in. Out, in. I'm going to use my fingers like this for a little while longer. You might know it's goofy because it really helps to illustrate exactly what's happening and where. Also, it's eventually going to link to a really awesome striking pattern I'm going to show all of you that's based entirely off of this mechanic. About 30 more seconds of this, change sides if you haven't already. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, you're all making really good progress with this one. It takes time. Um, again, just through the day, spend a few minutes on circle walking here, or there, and that's really what it takes to make progress with circle walking. There, there's so much stuff going on here that if you try to cram it all in at once, it's just to get overwhelmed. Pick two or three principles, play with that for a week. Next week, add in a couple more principles. Once they become ingrained and automatic, then you can start stacking them. Before you know it, you have a really comprehensive base in circle stepping. Just make sure you take the time to chew each piece on its way down. All right? So let's take a quick look at that hand pattern I was talking about because it's a fun one. Sweet. We have some time. Excellent. So this comes from... Um, Jean Shreyan's morning warm-ups. Just a set of things he does every day in the temple. Starting with the feet in a nice relaxed base. We're going to take a break from stepping for a moment. It's going to be a reach across into a slice. Reach, slice, 
reach slice. Fun little coordination exercise at face value. If I borrow Rachel for a second. If Rachel punches in at me, it has that, which looks really cool if I know she's going to punch the right hand. Haha, I can do that over and over again. It's great. But in combat, it's not meant to be catch, strike. What it is if she comes in is there's a constant roll. So again, we're playing, the strikes are coming in. And you see how I'm rolling over for the hit, rolling over for the hit, just weaving my body back and forth, clearing as I'm kind of climbing my way up my partner into that strike. <laughs> Zhang is about yay tall, and he can easily climb up and tear up my eyeballs because he's just so fast and coordinated with that little movement. Okay? So once again, the base of it, you okay? Okay. Cool. Roll to strike, roll to strike. There's a compression as the hand comes across, and then there's that spark, pop, there's the folly as you reach. Compress, pop, compress, pop. Roll to strike, roll to strike. As I roll across, it's not arm waggling like this. The body draws in, the body uncoils, the body draws in, wrapping, twisting, drawing to my belly. As I bring that movement across, pop to the side. Wrap, coil, and draw. See that rotation of my arm? That rotation of the arm is mirrored by a rotation of my abdominal musculature. As I draw in, pop. In, pop. As I get more comfortable, notice how my hips Move with. I strike one way, the hips roll the other. Roll, round, pop. Keep playing with that. Wrap. <laughs> Draw, pop. From the extension, catch that extension, wrangle it back in. From that wrangling, pop. Catch that extension, draw. Because I want to catch it, I'm not going to move my arm to lock out. There's always a little bit of yin left in the expressive yang. That little bit of yin is the weight that I use to capture that movement draw back into my core, and pop out the other side. Good, Rachel, feel the difference? Yeah. Everyone keep playing with that for a few moments. There is mouse. For those of you who've done Pao Choy, this is mostly um, Caro, Derek, and Elizabeth. When I was talking to Master Guan my last trip, who was um, Zhang Kai's youngest disciple, so the youngest student of the old Grand Master, what he was saying from Shirts Choy even, is that as you came through, the hands passed in a similar manner as they went out to the other side, right? And it's the idea of everything coiling in the middle exists in Bagua, it exists in the Pao Choy families. A lot of schools have that as a method of gathering, producing power, okay? Any questions so far? You're all doing great. We have about 10 minutes left. What do you think, Rachel? Torturous? Let's do it. Okay, cool. Quick drink of water. We have one more thing left to do. Might as well. Yeah. What would be adequate meat people for today? I have a guess. All right. 
hands on the kneecaps, knee circles. Change directions. All right, forward, open, and back. Back, open, and forward. Okay. Finding a nice medium high core stand. So that means is what the feet, the outside aspect of the feet are parallel. Belly is drawn to the spine as I sink. And I want to sink down low enough that I feel my quads holding me up. I don't want to be so low that I hate life. My quads are about to explode in the beginning. All right. From that position, we're going to take the hands and press the palms away from each other, the heels of the palms. The fingertips are pulling up pushing the arms away, trying to make as much space in my shoulders, elbows, and chest as I can, pushing the world back on both sides. Head, neck, raise, belly to umbilicus, feet gently grab the ground just like everything else. Constant pressure. Next lead, arms come in front of the body, reaching the fingertips, see my shoulders are going back, fingertips are going forward, creating as much space in every joint as I can, from the tips of my fingers to the shoulders, everything opens as I stretch. Every exhalation, I stretch a little bit further. Keep reaching. Good. Shake out those legs. A couple more knee circles for good measure. All right. Post. Reaching up with one arm. <laughs> Sink, lift, turn, big kobu, press with that right arm, left arm comes through, see how the thumb is up, sink, lift, big kobu, press with that left arm, the right arm, the left arm comes through, sink, turn, press right, Reach left. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Press right, left, draws down that inside of the leg to the toe, through. This kind of movement is really, really hard to do unless you do a few of them every day. If you do four of these a day each side before you know it, you're doing a minute of these each day each side, in a couple of minutes, and then your knees will stop hurting. Pressing with the other hand, changing directions. Sink, raise, see the body turns, they come around kobu, press, reach <laughs> through, turn,
half circle more. Last one. Okay. Next one, you shake those legs out for a brief moment. Oh, goody, we have three minutes left. It's <sighs> perfect. So, a couple knee circles. Other direction. Back and forth, swoop to swoop. Okay, shake those out. If your knees start hurting, you can always take a break. This next exercise, my feet are gonna be in parallel. My hands are gonna be on my hips. I'm gonna to sink to one side, coming right across the middle, sink to the other. Notice I'm starting nice and high. My knees need a break, I'm gonna take a break. You say that's with feet parallel? Yeah. Opening one hip, then the other, side to side. Once we get a little bit looser now, sink, sink. Five more. Last one. Okay, shake those out. So that is the prescription for Dong and Kwa that Zhang Chuang gave me a couple trips ago. And it's hard, um, but if you do a few of those every day, you get a lot stronger pretty quick. Any questions?